we are Stop Holding Back, a um, charity that helps people who stutter in employment and just for general stuff. My name is Ruben. And um, yeah, so today we are doing like a vodcast, podcast slash chat, really. Um, three or four of us here, friends now for quite some time now. So yeah, um, shall we go around and just do like a intro? Just do names for now and then we'll bit by bit get, and get into things. So um, let's start with... I'm Chris. From SHB, we've been working on it for how many years now? And it's really good to meet Callum all together because we've been meeting for a while on Zoom. So yeah, yeah. man. Name is Ayo. I'm a founder, a co-founder of the charity too, Stop Holding Back. So it's, it's really cool to be here and just ha to chat with my guys. Yeah, so I'm uh, Callum. I'm sort of the new kid on the block, really. I've been introduced to the charity. I'm one of the mentors here. And yeah, it's great to be here with the guys. Just for the first bit, I thought it would be good. Maybe take it in turns, talk about maybe one like great thing that has happened in relation to your speech over the past year, and maybe one challenge or experience that was a bit dodge that happened as well. So uh, I'm gonna start off with CJ. <laughs> Put me on the spot. Um, I think one good thing that's happened with my speech is the the overall acceptance of it. I can't really pinpoint one key moment or one key experience that I've had, but the overall acceptance of I will have to get involved regardless of how good my speech is or if I'm in the zone or if I'm not in the zone. Um, but the flip side of it is that when there's moments where your speech is not that great, you are the person that was working on their speech to everyone else. So everyone else might be like, okay, your speech ain't that great no more. And because you've had such good speech and people have seen you have such good speech, when you haven't got good speech, it gives other people an opportunity to judge you without them realizing because they're now comparing the CJ that's come off of all these speech programs that have done a bit of public speaking, have been on podcasts and all the rest of it. It gives them an opportunity to now compare the you after COVID where you're struggling, you're stressed, speech might not be that great uh, to what once was. So that to kind of fully accept that is a challenge within itself. So the good thing is, is that overall acceptance, I genuinely don't care whatever happens, happens. But then the flip side is you do get certain reactions from people and certain questions saying like, are you not really working on your speech that much no more? What's happening? So yeah, but overall, as long as you carry on speaking and you're not avoiding, that is always what we've aimed for and always what we try to achieve so overall it's not the worst it could be worse so yeah Callum well, what about you yeah probably for like the moment or moment it's like it's not even a big moment if you look on the grand scheme of things but this year I'm in university and I play for my education football team and that's a big moment for me because on my first training session I went there and I knew nobody and I know that sort of Ability-wise, I'm not the best football in the world, so I knew. I, I think we know that already, by the way. That's just a Welsh thing. <laughs> <laughs> As I turned up to training, not knowing anyone, knowing I, I'd be somewhere lower down the peck in order when it comes to five aside, and then, but just being there is something that I think I don't know if I would have done even as soon as twelve months ago, because of those anxieties, those worries, and now the fact that me and my team are top of the league over Christmas. I know what they say about if you're top of the league over Christmas, but let's ignore that. But we're doing well. I get along with the boys so well. I'm playing well, and I'm actually showing progress as a person just for being there, for turning up. Then that is definitely, even though it's only something little in the grand scheme of things, to me, that shows progress because 
just getting through, getting out of that door to go to that first training session, as I had doubts. I was like, oh, I could just stay in. It's a bit cold. It's a 40-minute walk. But I still got there. And now, yeah, I don't regret it at all, really. And I probably the struggle over the last year has been trying to stay as Callum, not someone with a stutter. Particularly in the field of education where I currently work and I'm trying to be a primary school teacher. It's very easy, particularly when you're posting content online, talking to people, or trying to raise awareness, that you become known as a stuttering teacher. And that's not what it's about. I'm a teacher who might stutter sometimes and might have good days and slightly challenging days when it comes to speech. I don't want to fall into that rabbit hole of stuttering becoming my identity. That's got nothing to do with my ability to teach. It's got nothing to do with who I am. It's just a, a part of me that happens now and again. So I think it's quite hard not to get stuck into that rabbit hole when you are trying to raise awareness and trying to reach people with stuttering. It's just to not let yourself become a stutterer. I think that's definitely my main point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so that's powerful. That's so yeah. powerful. Not becoming known as the stutterer or the stuttering guy. That's been like since day one for me. I'm not gonna be that guy who's just known for stuttering. So I respect that fully. Like, yeah, it's like achievement. Isn't it? Like, if I'm making an achievement, for example, if I'm doing well in my class, if I'm taking on challenging kids, I want to be congratulated for what I do with a teacher. I don't want it to be well done. You did that with a stutter. It's not, I did well because I did well. I, I didn't do well because of my stutter. And that's, I, I want to try and shake that burden of people thinking success, success stories are because you stutter. And no, it's actually because you're doing well in your field regardless. 100%. What yeah. about you, Aya? So for me, this past two years I've been in a transition in terms of my career. I worked as a railway engineer for like seven years in England and then I transitioned now into a software developer, and I work in Sweden doing that full time. So that whole process has been crazy and challenging in terms of speech. I've done like, I would say, maybe 50 interviews, like with different types of personalities, um, done assessments, I've done coding exercises, sometimes live, so I have to actually tell the instructor, the instructor what I'm doing as I'm coding, so that requires really, really good communication because communication in coding, programming world is everything. If you can't communicate well, you have no chance in really going far in that career. And I, and I think that is um, the case in most professions. Com communication is key. And having a stutter makes that extremely challenging. So it's been very hard for me on occasion, but with me, I know I have the ability, I have the skills, and I can achieve whatever I put my mind to. Eventually, I will achieve it. So I don't really pay any attention to stuttering much. I, I try to like, I disclose. I, if I'm in a meeting with someone, someone brand new or in an interview, I always disclose because more so for them, so they understand if I start to block. Not really for me, because I'm going to start anyway, and I'm just going to keep going. So just having the acceptance, like you were saying, Chris, going through that process and accepting myself as a person who stutters sometimes, and just trying to focus on the target and focus on what I can add in terms of value to the business, despite my stuttering. That is what's been, that's what's made this, um, this life for me more, more enjoyable not focusing on the um, speech impediment, more more on the focus on the on the skills I'm I I've learned and the skills I can add add value to to, to the business. Mm. 